let's start with our first um, speaker with Georgi Bedanashvili. And as I said, he's going to talk about the research, uh, recent excavations at Rabati, at the Santre de Rocheti uh, region. Um, very interesting site, uh, several seasons that did very interesting uh, results with both Coaraxis and rich Bedeni culture um, uh, layers. So very interesting to hear um, what you have to say. Um, Georgi, let's start. The, the stage is yours. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sarit. Yeah. Thank you for your introduction. And I agree with you, yeah. <clears throat> the transition between Kurax and Bedeni cultures are um, a very interesting and very actual, uh, uh, particularly today. There's uh, recently, there are more and more uh, research on this topic. I don't know why uh, now, but yeah. And so, so today, uh, the aim of today's uh, presentation is to, to show the, the res uh, uh, result of ex recent excavations at Rabati settlements where we have uh, Kurax and Bedeni cultures. So, which is, uh, Rabat is, a, I'll just remind you, it's a, a multi-layer multi settlement located in Southwest Georgia. Um, uh, so, uh, Rabat settlement, settlement first was, was dis discovered by, uh, in 1974 by Dariel Chubinishvili when he, he, he found this nice uh, clay figurine with obsidian eyes. And later, uh, Otar Rambashidio also uh, conducted a test uh, uh, trenches there. So, ba based on these based on these uh, 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 works uh, from sh short reports, we already knew that at Rabat we we had we had Bedeni and Kurax uh, periods, and it was only uh, in 2016 uh, when at Rabati. Uh, uh, Georgian Australian uh, project named uh, Gaia uh, started uh, excavation in the time it was directed by Professor Antonio Sagona. Later, uh, yeah, later in, in uh, 2018 and 19, uh, the excavation was directed by uh, Andrew Jamison, Claudia Sagona, and uh, myself. So the result, uh, the, the presentation I'm going to show is the result of our uh, teamwork. So uh, before I, before I start uh, uh, about robot itself, let me let me let me briefly provide you a, a, a short uh, overview of of of, Mes of uh, early Bronze Age sites in, in Mesquite Jawaketi region, Southwest Georgia. Um, they, they, uh, the, the main geographical uh, feature of this region is, of course, the Kura, Wild, uh, Kura River, which flows from the south to the north. And, and there's abundance of uh, archaeological sites along this river and, and in highlands as well. Um, in 1950s, when uh, archaeologists surveyed and recorded over 600 uh, archaeological sites, and among them, 18 uh, uh, were uh, early Kura, early Bronze Age, sorry, early Bronze Age. Um, although the abundance of those uh, sites, uh, only uh, only uh, only only one uh, Kura settlement, early Bronze uh, site was systematically investigated, and it was uh, the Amiranis Gora by Ariel Chubinishvili in uh, 1950s. Uh, and other other sites, other early Bronze Age uh, sites, remain un, unexcavated. Just yeah, just most, just small uh, small scale excavations, which of course it's not serious, uh, enough to understand the character of this uh, of those sites. Uh, and it was all, only uh, in two thousand when uh, we have in this region uh, the job variety settlement excavated uh, systematically. And Tiseli Seri uh, settlement as well as a result of the BP pipeline construction years later. And one of the characteristic characteristic feature of this uh, of, of this region uh, in the early Bronze Age is that we, all, as you can see and as as you know, uh, we have these stone built structures in, in Kurak's uh, 
culture as opposed to Shida cult cartilagian, where as, as you can see here, we have these what what kind of uh, structures. Another another interesting issue in, in, uh, also uh, it, it is about the Bedeni culture, as as we know that uh, well, Bedeni culture is, a, is a, it belongs to early Kurgan period, and most of we know about Bedeni culture from 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 this large rich uh, uh, Kurgan with the, with the rich uh, uh, grave goods among them can be a, a char a wooden chariots as well, uh, uh, but surprisingly. Uh, 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 in, in, in Southwest Georgia and Meske Jawakati region, we don't have any 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 uh, Bedeni Kurgans. Probably reason uh, reason uh, is that uh, is, is it's a geographical landscape, this rocky and hilly landscape, where right? it's difficult to detect uh, Kurgans as opposed to like uh, uh, in, in uh, Eastern Georgia and Kakheti in Alazani Wale. Where it's much easier to find this Kugan. So maybe is the reason. So, uh, uh, but, but another thing that I would like to uh, mention here, it, it is not uh, only about, only about uh, not only about the uh, Mesca Java Heti region, but also generally to this South Caucasus region is uh, the uh, uh, relationship between Kuraks and Bedeni cultures. Among the Georgian scholars, uh, the idea that the Bedeni community lived side by side with local Akurak population in the region until, uh, until traces of the later were finally extinguished. Another, another, another word, uh, idea is that the Bedeni culture emerged with, with the Kurak's culture and after a period of coexistence, both cultures disappeared at the same time. So, uh, uh, recently, uh, recently, Elena Rova with uh, her colleagues uh, uh, in, uh, examined, examined this issue, the coexistence of, of, of Bedeni, Bedeni and Kurak's culture when they, re, re, uh, when they re investigated the uh, Natsar Gora settlement located in, in uh, Shidakar region. Uh, so, and they, they, they don't, they, uh, they, they, they didn't find any evidence of coexistence of Kuraks uh, and Bedeni culture at, the, at that site. However, still we, we have many quite stronger uh, evidences of coexistence, coexistence of Bedeni and uh, Kuraks culture, like, like at, Nats, uh, at uh, um, uh, I forgot the name of the sites, like, like Yilto, uh, 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 like other set settlements, we have uh, coexist, and even not, not only at, at, at settlements, but also in, 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 in uh, Kugans as well. So, uh, but uh, but uh, if if we if we consider that the Bedeni and Kurak's culture coexisted, uh, then then uh, how it uh, how it is that uh, how how we can uh, where we can place Bedeni culture in terms of uh, periodization. So as we, as as we know, many 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 scholars. Uh, Attribute uh, uh, Bedeni culture to Mid Bronze Age, right? Which is uh, which uh, seems right as as, uh, as Bedeni culture is associated with the, with this so social cultural changes uh, similar to what we have in Triologic culture. So it makes sense that to place uh, Bedeni culture in uh, uh, Mid Bronze Age. But if if Bedeni and uh, uh, Bedeni and Kurak's culture coexist, how it's possible that uh, 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 two epochs uh, coexisted as well. Uh, so uh, probably we should we should we should we should we should we should regard and we should uh, we should regard this issue uh, differently. So uh, like uh, like uh, some scholars uh, attribute the the, uh, the Bedeni period to, to the to to the final uh, the fourth period of, of early Bronze Age, which is a, like a transitional from early Bronze Age into the into the Middle Bronze Age. It's like a, maybe it's like a solution. For, for this problem, so um, though it was this was all the, uh, some issues that I wanted to to share with you uh, before I start talking about the Rabati settlement. Um, yeah, so uh, let's so uh, the main uh, when, when we start the excavation of Rabati settlement, the, the, one of the main uh, aims was to understand uh, links between early uh, Kuraks and Bedeni culture, culture. So um, we had to excavation, I'll just remind you, probably you already know from, from, other, from 
in previous presentations. So we, we conducted the uh, excavation into places at, at the top of the summit of, of Rabati settlement. It's a, uh, it's a uh, Rabat, uh, Rabat settlement, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mound flattened. So we, we excavated into areas on top, of, on top of the summit in the central area and the, on the western edge of the summit. You can see on the, on the, on the map. So um, in the central, in the central change, we have this monumental stone-built uh, Kurat structure, which was uh, probably uh, modified several times uh, when, when it was still functioned. We can you can see all these walls, and it was later later it was disturbed by by medieval um, medieval activities uh, later, but still uh, we we could we could excavate uh, uh, undisturbed floor level of this structure. Um, let's see here, and and. and and another thing was that uh, uh, different from like uh, this is for the from of Chopareti, where you have this large number of of, of, of pottery uh, laying on the on the floor of this building. At at at, at, Rabat, at Rabat, uh, we don't have uh, such large number of materials there, uh, but still we we have enough uh, enough Kurat uh, materials on the floor level floor floor level of the segment to to. To, to attribute to attribute to to its uh, to Kurak sculpture and also we have radiocarbon dates from the floor level of the structure which which uh, which dates this uh, building to 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 uh, 3000 3800 BC well uh, we uh, we con we made uh, almost uh, 19 uh, 19 samples of radiocarbon dates from from Rabati um, which is we uh, which we published uh, 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 published in journal Radiocarbon. The article is in press, so soon the, the result of Radiocarbon date will be uh, of Rabat will be published. But I'll, uh, what I can tell you now that so uh, the uh, Kur uh, Kurat's culture uh, of, of uh, here it's dated to the 2000-2800 BC. Uh, in the same in the same central trench, uh, uh, we uh, we have uh, we, we also have a Pedeni uh, uh, Malaya or like the uh, uh, Kurak structure, uh, and and this the, this deposit is uh, Pedeni deposit is really is treated with the uh, pottery and bone materials, uh, but. Uh, much uh, uh, Bedeni is much more presented in the western edge of the summit. Uh, here, uh, like, like uh, in central edge, uh, in, in central trench, um, uh, Bedeni uh, layer is also disturbed by medial activities. But still, we have enough enough data to to understand the character of the of the of the of this period. So. Uh, Bedini here is mostly represented uh, like <clears throat> like uh, uh, clay uh, fragments of clay layers. Uh, we were not able to find any any evidence of of structure here, but uh, these clay layer uh, uh, plus and plasters are, are rich with uh, with uh, pottery and bone uh, bone bone tools. And also uh, stone tools as well. Uh, here, here you can see one of the one of the uh, one of the uh, one of these layers. So these layers and layers of, of clay uh, plaster layers was uh, was found here, containing large number of materials. And, and as for the uh, pottery material, uh, to to say generally. Uh, mostly, we have two type of uh, uh, two type of pottery. Mostly, it's a uh, fine ware, which we know it from 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 Pudans. and also we have the this common ware, which is mostly known from uh, from uh, Bedeni settlements. So, and also as for the radiocarbon dates of, of uh, Bedeni uh, layers, yeah, more, 
around, around it, it is dated from 2400 to 2000 BC. So, and yes, and uh, uh, what, uh, and we have also, as we mentioned, we have lots of phone tools. And one of the things is that one, one, might, one might think that, uh, and it, um, uh, one might think that, uh, okay, the, uh, uh, that the, the, the small in, uh, social investment of, 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 uh, of construction, buildings, uh, structures uh, in the beginning period compared to uh, Kurak's culture can be, can be explained as, a, as, a, as its Bedeni, period, Bedeni, uh, Bedeni uh, occupation is a seasonal, but the large number of uh, agricultural tools among them, uh, among them uh, these bone tools, also paleobotanical and palynological uh, analysis demonstrate that uh, the this Bedeni occupation might be also a, a sedentary uh, a belongs to sedentary population, but uh, of course uh, further investigation, uh, further multi um, disciplinary investigation of this of this period probably will give you much will give us much more more question uh, answer to to this question. Uh, and also another, another interesting thing, uh, thing that as we saw uh, stratigraphically and also based on the radiocarbon dates, uh, there's a uh, quite uh, clear uh, gap between Kuroaks and Bedeni, Bedeni deposits. Uh, based on radiocarbon dates, uh, it is almost 400, for, uh, for, yeah, for 400 uh, uh, years a gap, which is quite, quite big, but still, uh, still, we have certain similarities between uh, between uh, Kurax and uh, Bedeni in terms of uh, materials, like 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 this endurance and hairs. Like you can see this uh, spiral uh, horns that is typical uh, found uh, uh, comes from from Bedeni uh, Bedeni period uh, at Rabati, and uh, this one is you know uh, uh, resembles to to Kurax. Also, another thing, uh, another interesting thing uh, in terms of linking uh, Bedeni and Kurax culture uh, can be uh, that that is not only related to the Arabati bolts, but also can be generalized over entire South Caucasus. Is that uh, always all Bedeni uh, occupations are found at uh, Kurax settlements, which is all, also uh, uh, issue can. Uh, uh, can can be a link between between these two two cultures. So uh, yeah, in, in this uh, small uh, small presentation, I, I, I provided more more I posed more more question other than uh, answers. So, but I'm sure uh, I'm sure we'll find uh, the answers in future investigations like at Rabati or at Irmi Sirka that Georgi is going to present now. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Georgi. Um, I'm actually very happy that you posed all these questions because these are um, a bunch of things that I also listed and I think um, will raise um, some um, interesting discussion later. Um, there is, um, before I, I, um, I let you guys ask questions, um, could you please um, uh, clarify the issue of the dates um, that you have in the sites? Because there has been some questions here in the chat regarding um, early bronze, middle bronze, and the radiocarbon date from Rabati. Yeah, so I just see here. Yeah. I saw the... <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you can just um, address this, and then um, we can start okay. getting more questions here. Okay, uh, may I miss the camera sound? So um, I may um, have missed it. Uh, can uh, someone tell me what the day trains are for EB and uh, MBA in this region? Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, a mess, we know. <laughs> it's a mess, yeah. So um, uh, is, is it general, uh, but generally, yeah, it's... it's <laughs> yeah. Can be so we, Maybe yeah, we, I mean, I think we basically draw the line somewhere around 2500, right? Uh, between EB exactly. and... Exactly, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. like end of core axis, but uh, things are, are a little bit fuzzy and this is part of the problem and part of the questions that, that we have to address here. Of course, um, yeah. And, yeah, well, um, well, yeah, well, based on based on Rabat, uh, uh, based on Rabat itself, and say uh, the the uh, beginning of of this, but then if we, if we if we attribute it to if we attribute it to uh, mid bronze age, yeah, it's it's like a, it's a starting something from two thousand four hundred. Two thousand four hundred. Yeah, but again, as you said, uh, uh, the border between uh, early bronze and mid bronze age, it's, it's still <laughs> yeah. To say yeah. Okay, and just to clarify one more thing, we don't have um, a sequence um, that overlaps. I mean, we have a gap between the Coraroxis layers in Rabati and the Bedeni, right? The Coraroxis are somewhere in the transition between Coraroxis 1 and 2, around mm -hmm. somewhere 3,800, and Rabati is in the Bedeni, sorry, is later. Yeah. So far, yes, so far is uh, the, the evidences where we have today, but uh, we, we think that uh, in the future we might have uh, evidence of coexistence of, 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 of Kurorax and uh, uh, Bedeni culture. Is, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the ceramic materials uh, we find in, in Bedeni have elements of uh, Kurorax culture. This is, a, you should, uh, this is a thing that can indicate uh, this coexistence, but so far, no, there's a, a big gap. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so as Catherine um, asked again, there is no, so far, we have no mixed levels um, yes. of yeah, about, yes. until now, yeah, uh, which makes again the, the, the study of the transition uh, more complicated for yes. us. <laughs> And um, there's another question here for Georgi. Do you think these groups were likely agropastoral and consume dairy products? Well, yes, yeah, yeah. I didn't go into the details uh, as, as this issue is still uh, under, uh, under the investigation and uh, we, we, just, we still study, but uh, preliminary, uh, I can tell you, yeah, we have a lot of evidence of, of agricultural activities at, at, at Rabati in Bedini period, which, which gives substance to say that, yes, they, they are agriculture. Uh, we, we are dealing with agriculture population, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we have another um, question, comment from Sepide. Uh, hi, uh, thank you for the talk. I wonder if the lack of Bedeni architecture could be due to the late activity of the medieval period. Um, yeah, uh, uh, yes, but, but still we, we, st we still have an uh, undisturbed part of uh, Bedeni Patients, uh, whereas we still don't have any, any evidence of architecture, and and it is not only at Rabati. And if you if you look at other uh, other other between period settlements like uh, in Shidakarkli, it is it is the same. It is same most mostly presented with uh, with pits like like uh, Pericote, one of the classic uh, site uh, uh, is is is, is Pericotepi. Uh, yeah, yeah, so we still don't have much ev evidence of architecture, yeah. yeah. So probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. I think that's one of the problems, but actually, I mean, when you say no architecture, you kind of um, diminish the um, importance of the, um, the plastered floors that uh, you have there, yeah, yeah, which are actually related to some <laughs> sort of, yeah, I yeah. don't know. Of course, no, of course yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you don't have the walls, but you do have several layers of um, plastered floors. Yes. Um, that in itself is something to to talk about because it's something that is also very typical to Kuraroxis um, um, architecture and also open areas. So yes. that's something to think about, right? Of course, yeah. Well, when we're talking about not ar no architecture. I'm just comparing it with uh, with uh, these nice uh, Kruak stone structures where we have there. Yes. Yeah. Of course, sure. itself, it's uh, it's already the plaster layers, uh, floor side. It's already something. Yeah. 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 Um, another question from Nathaniel. I see here. Great talk, Georgi. 
where in your view do Maltopi materials fit into the picture of interaction between early and middle Bronze Age cultures? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, I, I, I haven't tried this question. It's, it's another, it's another interesting topic. Uh, yeah. uh, well, well, based on the evidences what we have now from, from mostly from, from, from Kurgans. So, uh, Markov is, is, is dated uh, earlier than, than Bedeni and yeah. they, like more, more, more idea about it. The uh, Markopi and uh, Kurax co uh, existed uh, than than Bedeni, but uh, yeah. But of course, yeah, uh, based on evidence, Markopi should be earlier. Yeah. Um, thank you. I see. I will go back to more questions, but I see a comment by Elena um, that writes that in Berkeley Debbie there is some architecture, but the difference with Kuaraxis culture is anyway remarkable, which is true. I mean, I think Berkeley Debbie is one of the very few sites that we have both what happens before and what happens after Kuaraxis, but it's, yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so of course we, yeah, we have this uh, architecture with clay, this clay structures at, at uh, Berkeley Debbie. Yeah. Actually, uh, it, it, uh, uh, speaking about the, the coexistence of Bedeni and Kurax culture, at Perik Debi also, uh, they don't exist to, together. Uh, there's a quite clear gap between, uh, between Kurax and uh, Bedeni. And uh, mm -hmm. I, would say, uh, I would say that uh, uh, Rabati resembles very much to, to Perik Debi in terms of ceramics materials and uh, uh, the, 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 the this, uh, the, uh, the, the, the character of the deposition creation also. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, a question from Dimitri. Um, do you find burials? You, have, you no. haven't found any yet, no? Yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's very interesting. So the, the only, uh, only graves that we, we have in nearby, nearby area so far, it's, it belongs to uh, uh, Mid Bronze Age, which was excavated in uh, 1970 by Otto Gambashi. Then we later uh, also excavated uh, a couple of them, but all of them uh, belong to uh, classical triolatic culture. But mm -hmm. as, as I mentioned before, uh, I, I don't know, uh, maybe someone knows, but I don't know any, any uh, Bedeni culture, uh, Kurgans uh, in, in, in that region. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, Mitchell, hi, uh, writes a comment, which I think uh, you can address now, but we will have to um, further discuss in our um, uh, final discussion because it's, it's a big topic. So Mitchell writes that Bedeni and Kuraxis seem like very um, distinct societies. Aren't you putting too much emphasis on a few similarities of pottery style? Um. Yeah, yes, and it's not all. It's not. It's not only about the uh, about the pottery. Uh, uh, there, there are further more evidences of of of, of similarities of of, of uh, Kurax and, and Bedeni. Uh, one one of the thing I mentioned uh, that yeah uh, uh, that always uh, Bedeni occupations are are, are at the Kurax settlement or almost you know, almost. Another thing that uh, and like uh, in in in, uh, in Bedeni Kurgans, we we have uh, we have some uh, clear Kurax uh, materials as, as well. And, and how how it is possible that so these two, uh, two two materials were uh, were were placed in, were found uh, together? Those two two different two different uh, objects were found together. So. Um, uh, so yeah, but it's, yeah, it's an interesting question. But yeah, there, there, are, the, there, there are many, many, uh, many issues that I haven't mentioned that uh, that links uh, uh, Kurax and uh, Bedeni culture. Yeah, I think. Um, thank you, Georgi. I think this is something we will uh, maybe develop later in our of um, discussion of because yes. it really it goes uh, way beyond this. Uh, I think. I mean, Mitchell has a point about the the differences in nature of society between um, Koraxis and Bedeni, 
but it's not, you know, like always, things are not clear cut, like how they change, why they change, what happened is something that we have to yeah. um, maybe yeah. discuss further. I agree, uh, they, are, they are completely different cultures, but uh, probably the similarity they, they have, it's probably the it's chronology, they, they, they coexist in some, in, 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 during in some period, and that's it, yeah. Otherwise, yeah, it's co completely different cultures. Yeah, I mean, we can we can talk about. I mean, at least uh, I mean, in social and economic um, um, issues, right? Um, I mean, oh, the yes. society, the structure of society is something completely different, which we'll yeah. um, have to think about. Um, yes. Another comment from Paul. Really interesting talk. Thank you. Um, is there any evidence of Bedeni culture in Western Georgia? and interaction with Kolchis, uh, with Kolchian Bronze Age culture, or is it geographically limited to the same area of Kuraraxis? That's a good one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the uh, uh, question is still open. Um, uh, like like, like in, 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 in Pichori, we, we have the, the excavator Larry Gibladze uh, who, who excavated the, the, this uh, black burnished uh, 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 pottery, uh, so things that it might be, it might be some, uh, some, uh, some connection with Bedeni culture. So uh, uh, Pichori is located in, uh, uh, near the Black Sea. So there are some, uh, some uh, small evidences of, of, of certain uh, elements of Bedeni culture in culture, but it's still, still nothing substantial. Yeah. Thank you. Um, actually, about the um, I think the geographical um, um, extent of, of the Bedeni culture, I think um, Gia's lecture also touches upon that because um, this excavation also opened some new uh, information for us about Bedeni, where we were not so sure about how much we have. Um, any further questions to Georgi at this point about Rabati? Okay. Um, Sorry, may yes. I ask? Of course, Ruben, always. Georgi, also thanks, okay. and I congratulate you with not only excavation, but and coming publication of your article. But uh, tell me please, how it's um, possible or how it's logical to investigate the relation of Kurarax and Bedeni and ignore Mart Kopi's stage, which is, as far as we know, pre Bedeni. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, of course, I agree with you. Uh, we shouldn't ignore uh, Mark Kopi uh, at all when we are talking about the uh, interaction between between this. Uh, uh, Kurax culture in uh, early, uh, early, early Kurgan period, which belongs to Bedeni and Markopi as well. But the only reason why I haven't mentioned, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I haven't mentioned here, okay. I haven't mentioned here that uh, at Rabat we don't have any, any evidences of, okay. of Markopi, and this is the only reason. Yeah, so, <laughs> this is the only reason I haven't mentioned it. Yeah. So okay. otherwise, I agree completely that yes, I agree. I, I agree with you completely that yeah, we should. We should take into consideration Markopi, which is one of the main, uh, uh, it's a key uh, understanding of this early uh, Kurgan uh, culture and the uh, uh, Kurak culture. Okay. Uh, you think that, um, I just asked your um, opinion yes, or impression, so Markopi, it's closer to Bedeni or to the Kuraraks? Ah, yeah. Um, uh, it can be just impression, you know, not uh, opinion. Yeah, of course, I have no. the mic. I just ask. You know, yeah, yeah. It's it's a good question. Yeah, um, uh, I, uh, yeah. And uh, well, yes and no. Uh, uh, it resembles uh, it, it resembles to Kurak culture. Uh, Markopi resembles to, to Kurak culture in terms of uh, uh, pottery uh, pottery elements. But of course, mm -hmm. uh, of course. Uh, uh, Markopi uh, stands clo closer to Bedeni in terms of uh, social social structure, in terms of, of, of Kurgans and uh, 
uh, how how they uh, uh, demonstrate their their social social uh, social so, social power. Yes. So uh, so uh, for for uh, in, uh, I think that uh, Markovi stands in between in between a Kurat and Bedeni. So it re resembles both. Yeah. Chronologically and study in studial terms. Sorry. So Markopi does something between Kurarax and Bedeni. Yes. Both. Yes. Yes, I think, yeah. And and she might stay all up for both of them. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Georgi. I will share the screen. Can you see right? Yes. Okay, uh, so my presentation gonna be longer, a bit longer than Georgi's, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, sorry. Hello, everyone. I'm Kia Chilingarashvili, and today I'm going to talk about the Irmiska settlement. But before I start uh, talking about the uh, results, of excavation, uh, I would like to give a short background uh, and introduce you to the geography and archaeological uh, context of the of the region, because this part of the Meshet Chawaheti region is um, less known both in archaeology and uh, general. So, uh, first of all, uh, this area is characterized by difficult terrain. It's uh, bordered by th uh, three large mountain systems. It is bordered by Mesheti Ridge from the north, uh, from the south, Erusheti Ridge, and to the west by the Arsiani Ridge, which separates it uh, from Ajara. The main river in the region, uh, Kwabliani, flows between Erusheti and Mesheti Mountain, and it has several main tributaries, such as uh, uh, Ghawi, uh, Zinze, and um, uh, Otshe. Uh, so, uh, and modern settlements, uh, all modern settlements are, are located uh, in the valleys of, of these rivers. Uh, it should be noted that the uh, area uh, have several large and small crossings from the uh, region to western Georgia, including two main ones. To the west is uh, Goderzi Pass, uh, which goes to Ajara, and the uh, second one is uh, Zekari Pass in the north direction, which goes to Imereti. Zekari was one of the uh, most important roads for the region. Uh, it had the greatest trade and economic value uh, in the historical epoch and uh, was actively used until the 20th century before the Soviet occupation. And this passage must have had a similar value in prehistoric um, times as evidenced by the abundance of prehistoric uh, sites in this valley. So as for the south and east, uh, from the south, uh, from the south, uh, Potshovi River or Posovi River uh, flows uh, into the region. Through this road, contacts were made to the south in direction of uh, Anatolia. These contacts or relations in some case uh, have been attested on Orchosani Calcolytic site. Uh, to the east, this area joins modern Akhaltsihe and, and the river Kura or Kwari and how important the Kura is uh, uh, for the region uh, is well known and therefore I will not talk about this um, so uh, it might be said that this area is very foresty and uh, and the, which it, uh, and the region has small lands for farming and economy is mainly uh, based on livestock. So the rest area which uh, is not uh, covered by forest is used uh, by nomadic people for seasonal uh, nomadic people for pasture and uh, these areas are known as Yailas, which is Turkish word, and all modern villages have its own Yailas. So before I start talking about the, uh, the target issue, I will briefly tell you what period archaeological sites are in this region. Um, first of all, uh, uh, there is some, some uh, uh, places where Paleolithic and designed stone tools are collected, but none of them have been uh, explored except of uh, Amheri. They are uh, made several test trenches, but no in situ layer was tested. And also in this part, I mean Adigeni area, it's Adigeni municipality, and in Adigeni area, there are some Calcolithic and early Bronze Age sites. For example, Kanobili. Uh, settlement, 
Kanobili settlement located in Abastumani on the left bank of, uh, sorry, right bank of Otsche. We are remains of several stone buildings and calculated archaeological materials typical for, for Western Georgia have been identified. And also uh, calculated settlement of Orchosani, which was found during the work of the BP pipeline. And as I mentioned here, the local and Anatolian elements we are revealed. Uh, Orchosani is published in English and probably some of you uh, knows about this settlement. And uh, there is also some uh, early Bronze Age sites, such as uh, Kuraraxi sites, such as Zadengora and Fareha, but uh, none of have been uh, excavated, except of Fareha uh, in the 70s, Otar Rambashidze excavated several pits. Uh, and there are also four uh, more early Bronze Age, I mean, Kuraraxi sites, uh, where, which we found during surveys in 2014 and, and 17. So now, uh, and also this region is very, very now reach with uh, medieval sites and it's it's not uh, surprising because this region was one of the uh, uh, greatest and biggest um, during uh, the time. So now I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, Irmiska settlement. Uh, the site is located uh, on the Erusheti Mount, about two kilometers uh, south from the village Tsarbastumani, very close to the border of Turkey. Uh, the site is high mountain or, or uh, hill with a flattened summit. It's 15, 16 meters above the sea level, and from the summit is visible adjacent area. Can be said that it controls the area around it, and probably that's why people we are settled uh, during the millennia. Uh, instead of detailed description, I, I will present a uh, satellite image which shows how the uh, site actually looks like. This is a uh, Irmiska hill or uh, mountain. Uh, here is a summit, flattened summit, uh, where the um, settlement is located. So, uh, sorry. <clears throat> This is a view from the north, and this is a view from the uh, east, and here is uh, the settlement. Uh, so uh, our work, uh, so our we had work uh, to, on the two locations. So first is a damaged area. Uh, it's damaged by pipeline working in 2019, and we opened also um, for trenches. Uh, for trenches. Uh, and it might say that the settlement uh, before this work, uh, I mean, pipeline working, the site uh, was already damaged by, by Soviet activities. Here was a military base and there is uh, lots of uh, bunkers, canals, trenches, and so on. So uh, it's this is how the site looked like before uh, before we started working here, and uh, subsequently we cleaned all the area, and then the 35 pits and one pit burial was um, uncovered. Uh, of course, I will not touch all of the all of the pits. Uh, I will focus on some of them. Uh, Especially, uh, uh, this pit was especially very important and very interesting. Uh, it, uh, uh, it was only half preserved, but uh, still uh, was very rich. You can see uh, some Kuraraxi stuff from this pit. Here. And uh, also very interesting was pit number nine, where several uh, pitos was explored, but uh, uh, only uh, partially restored. Uh, um, uh, this one you can see, which is very, very um, uh, interesting one. It, had, uh, it has a uh, kind of zoomorphic decoration, which, which reminds us of anchor-shaped uh, pendants. Mm. And also very interesting was pit number 12. We are on the bottom of the uh, floor was uh, found this arrowhead, which is very different. It's manufacturing technique with its manufacturing technique. It's, it's a very uncommon shape. And it reminds us by any arrowheads uh, with its manufacturing, but in this case, it's, it differs by the steam. Uh, 
so another interesting pit was uh, this one. Uh, here uh, was a three uh, pits uh, intersecting with each other. Um, but this pit 24 was especially interesting because on the uh, floor of the pit was uh, identified this clay structure, uh, which was filled with ash and charcoal and uh, outside of the uh, this feature, uh, uh, very interesting uh, vessel was um, explored with a long handle and there was also some sickle blades, uh, calcedony sickle blades and other, other um, uh, ceramics uh, as well, which, which uh, dates uh, this uh, uh, pit to Bedouin culture. Uh, in general, for very, um, in totally from the Sadi pits, of, uh, was lots of materials, was lots of materials, so, uh, mostly uh, pottery and uh, and uh, lots of horseshoe uh, shaped and diorons. And uh, this one is very interesting. It's like, uh, it has the palus like head. We had this kind of heads uh, before this uh, found, we had this uh, kind of heads and did not understand what they were. We thought that uh, maybe they were uh, handles of leads, but after this found, I think it's clear. Uh, and also we have uh, from the piece, we have some uh, anthropomorphic uh, uh, fragments of endirons. And uh, I'm sure that most of you know what is endirons, but uh, for uh, example, I present this uh, picture. Uh, this is how uh, the first picture is how the endiron looks like. And the second was how, to, how it was used. And if you remember, our one is the same thing. Uh, so excavated pits uh, were belong to the uh, Kurarak's culture and only one was associated to Bedeni culture, but in uh, some pits was found a uh, late Bronze Age pits and it's very good uh, opportunity. I mean, evidence of this period on the site is a uh, very good opportunity for future studying. Uh, there was also excavated one, one uh, pit burial. Uh, it was damaged and anthropological remains we are partially preserved. Uh, the remains we are found to be in a very poor state of preservation, included an upper part of body, a couple of tooth and some remains of skull. There was not attested any grave goods, uh, which would give us the opportunity to date. Uh, it's difficult to identify the shape of the uh, burial. It's unclear. I mean, we know that the, uh, there is a pit dug up in the bedrock, but was it a pit for burial or it was just a pit like uh, other ones and reused for, for funerary purpose, like we have evidences from uh, Chobaretti, Tseta or Tserovani. So this all, all about a grave, uh, a general overview because anthropological remains are still unexplored and will be studied by Dr. Magach Gadua and she will get as much information as, as possible. Uh, now I will talk about other operations. As I mentioned before, uh, three, we opened three trenches uh, located on the slope, uh, I mean above the, uh, the uh, damage section. Uh, and, uh, and also I should say that uh, we had predetermined area. So how, uh, how, how many we could dig and where. So it <coughs> was uh, allowed to extended trenches. Uh, so this is the first trench. We are at depth of uh, 40 centimeters. The mm -hmm. remain of stone structure was exposed, which uh, supposed to be the back wall. Uh, the building was disturbed. The eastern part is damaged for natural reasons because it's a steep slope and southwestern corner was disturbed <coughs> by, by later but uncertain activities. Uh, and in this locus, uh, we are found uh, this Coraraxis uh, pottery, which is only half uh, part of the vessel. Uh, and so we did not consider to re remove this uh, first structure because we did not uh, understand, we could not uh, extend the trench and we did not understand what was the structure. I mean, what was the uh, reason of its disturb and also its, its uh, dimensions was unclear. So we decided to leave this uh, part and the continue excavation in a lower part of the trench. And then we found uh, two structures. This is a, a second structure in the middle. And uh, this was uh, disturbed as well, uh, both sides. And here was 
uh, particularly large uh, number of uh, stones, I mean, concentration with mixed with the black soil. And then uh, after removing of this, uh, we got this picture. Uh, it, it, it covered four pits. And very interesting uh, picture was observed here uh, between the bedrock and the pit, uh, a pen uh, and a three handled lid, lid was found. Uh, so uh, it, this, uh, the reason of uh, disturb of this uh, building was to these four pits. And it's interesting that this pit was very, very abundant. He was explored different sizes of Kuraraxis pottery. Uh, this one is especially interesting with the three handles on the, on the shoulder, uh, decorative handles, and some other small vessels. Uh, before I start talking about the, the third structure, uh, I want to show you this feature between the uh, first and, uh, sorry, second and third structure was observed this uh, pen like, um, and it, it was, uh, it was fragile and could not uh, removed and we just live like this. Uh, and, sorry. And I wonder the place of this pen in the general context of this trench, what we might associate it with the second structure uh, or the third, if, if it could be earlier. At this point, I really could not say. Uh, now the third structure, uh, as you can see, a very small part of it was excavated. It should be noted that this building is emptied in the bedrock. The walls are slightly bent outwards and the rest of the ground. Uh, interesting is that the part of where we went deep, materials uh, was not found. It is uh, completely filled with brownish clay. It's uh, uh, hard to talk about uh, what is this structure, but based on uh, its general appearance, I think it might be a burial. We don't know uh, exactly its uh, dimensions, as you can see, but similar Kuraraxis uh, tombs are known from this region. region. Um, uh, this is uh, the third structure. So uh, due to time, I cannot show the ma materials according to, to the context, but here are all, all, all important artifacts uh, from this trench, uh, which comes uh, basically comes from the interiors of the buildings. So some animal figurines, the first comes from the first structure and the second one comes from the uh, second structure. Uh, some uh, bone tools uh, and um, and irons as well, uh, arrowheads and sickle blades and a hammer, stone hammer. Uh, it seems that uh, preliminary, it seems that pottery from the pits are more well made than the pottery from trenches. Uh, fine wears uh, can be found uh, in this in materials from from uh, trenches, but coarse wear predominates. You can see that uh, on the surface, uh, some of them have small vegetal inclusions. It's also noticeable that the decor uh, noticeable that decoration is rare in the collection of Kuraraxis pottery. Uh, but uh, and uh, some pottery and. Uh, uh, some fragments are found in the topsoil with the relief ornament, but mainly the decoration is represented by incised motifs. There are also a few uh, cases when the vessel body has uh, two knobs on the shoulder, which is uh, also very characteristic motif for the uh, Kurarax culture and especially for, for this region. And uh, here is some uh, Pedeni uh, pottery also from, from the topsoil. So now the uh, second trench, this is a stratigraphic trench. We are five steps we are done and only three head cultural layers. The first step was on the edge of the summit uh, uh, and, the, and at a depth of about 30, 40 centimeters, a layer of grayish yellowish color was revealed. He, and um, uh, here in the southwest corner appeared the, the stone wall directed to the north uh, south line. Only a small part of it was into the excavated area, and uh, in the north um, in the northeast corner of the trench, high concentration of pottery fragments were exposed, which still goes in an excavated area. Um, 
uh, pottery repertoire comprised vessels of different size and shapes. Uh, most of them are original, some of them are original uh, in both for, for, form and ornament. Uh, this pottery, old pottery from the, uh, our excavation is re uh, restored by Salom Yahaladze, and I would like to thanks to her for uh, her amazing work. Uh, uh, all pottery from, from this concent concentration are decorated, except of this one, and this one is also very, very uh, uncommon shape for, for Bedeni culture. Uh, and also here is a uh, double-handled vessels with knob in the middle and uh, also similar pottery but a bit small and uh, this one is very very typical for for this culture i mean for bedeni culture this shape uh this one is uh the most distinctive pottery with the relief ornament below the mouth with which joins the platform like uh, i don't know how to say sculpture and uh, continues again this pot is only half part and should uh, probably have had a similar platform on the other side as well uh, and another uh, pottery from from that concentration, and this is picture how the uh, this decoration actually looks like, uh, and also this uh, uh, vessel which has a semi circular relief ornament between the handles and the hole on the uh, base, and there is also some uh, uh, storage vessels with a relief line on the between the handles and uh, another similar similar pottery uh, but it cannot be restored at this stage there is uh, some similarities in the forms uh, with the materials of Periglebi and Rabati. However, as we have seen, there are also some uncommon shapes, especially the decoration. Uh, the fabrication of the pottery has not been studied, but at first glance, it's very similar to the materials from above mentioned sites. Uh, generally, this type of pottery is known as cooking pots. All these pots are handmade, poorly fired, and roughly formed in the fabric, Greek inclusions, and golden mic are visible, uh, and mostly the surface is roughly polished. Besides of the cooking uh, wares in the same locus, some shirts of uh, Bedeni fine wares we are found as well. Some of shirts are black varnished and very polished, uh, as it's typical of Bedeni pottery, and sometimes they have incised decorations too. Uh, as for the other uh, types of artifacts, there are two unknown ceramic objects, this one here and this one, and some bone tools, lithics, uh, and uh, antler, which, which has a, a trace of sewing. Uh, um, uh, to summarize the results of the first step, uh, first of all, it must be said that uh, many things are unclear, uh, as in other cases. What is the wall, how it's related uh, to the uh, concentration of pottery? At this stage of work, it cannot be answered due to the scale of, of the excavation, and hopefully further uh, work of this area will provide uh, a, a better understanding of this complex. Um, on the, uh, a small part of the cultural layer was attested on the second uh, terrace. A stone wall uh, we are revealed. There is a, also another, this is a stone wall here, and also was another stone feature uh, attached to the first one, but it's, it's unclear for now what is this. Um, uh, it might be said that uh, uh, the, uh, here in this locus only Kuraraxis pottery was found, and it seems that this structure is covered by Bedeni deposits. Uh, and on the third terrace, if you look here, you, you can see a uh, wall. You can see a uh, wall uh, built of a large massive stones, which is also uh, still visible on the surface in some areas of the slope. Um, uh, the width of the wall reaches one meter. It is difficult to talk, talk about uh, this wall at this stage of the study, although it can be assumed that it was artificial terrace or had some defensive function. And excavations of this terrace have uncovered mainly late Bronze Age uh, uh, pottery fragments, suggesting that the date of the wall should be determined by the same period. Uh, there is also one interesting item behind this wall. It, this is a stone block here, uh, which is decorated 
with the scratched ornaments, uh, which is difficult to date. Uh, and also, uh, this pottery comes from the second uh, terrace. Uh, so, and uh, also we had uh, uh, another trench um, made in the northeastern part of the settlement. Excavations here have uncovered the stone wall linked uh, to the bedrock. The wall uh, itself was disturbed by late Bronze Age activities. Uh, this is uh, pottery from this pit like. And um, it, this trench was, uh, the situation in this trench was very complicated. If you look here, uh, from the, uh, here to this level uh, was mixed uh, materials with uh, no in-situ layer was attested here, no floor level, uh, just uh, mixed uh, pottery, uh, uh, axis and bedeni pottery uh, mixed together. And um, the wall, it seems that wall uh, stopped here, but the uh, layer of same, uh, same, uh, same layer was continued and we decided to make kind of test trench to see what was the uh, uh, foundation of this wall and also to understand what was this layer. So uh, you can see here that uh, uh, bedrock, which is artificially flattened very nicely and um, uh, and it's very hard to talk about uh, uh, this structure. What is this structure? Is this uh, uh, later? So this layer is uh, earlier than this structure, or or what's happening here? And this material comes uh, uh, from the small, tiny shirts of Kuraraxis uh, pottery from that uh, test range. Uh, and this is also some, uh, in general, some pottery from uh, from the this uh, trench, uh, this is Bedeni stuff here, and this is probably Kuraraxis shirts. Um, and also, uh, in the, uh, this uh, uh, arrowhead and uh, arrowheads comes from this trench, and here was uh, also a uh, small pendant, which, which, was, which is a silver color, and Nino Kalandadze analyzed this pendant and uh, co color uh, is due to the uh, high alloy of uh, arsenic. Uh, and uh, from the upper level, uh, I mean topsoil, uh, contained also a large number of uh, late Bronze Age uh, uh, ceramic. And it, interesting is that uh, here was uh, both uh, Western Georgian or Colchian uh, ceramic and also uh, much, uh, pottery, uh, which are typical for Eastern Georgia. And it's also a very uh, a good opportunity to study uh, relations of this culture, but it's not our uh, issue at this time. And surprisingly, there was very, very um, small number of uh, medieval medieval activities. Uh, and uh, this is uh, this pottery uh, dates uh, 5th, 6th century AD. And uh, also here was um, a silver candlestick, which dates to the 19th and 19th century probably. And it's, it's uh, uh, very unclear why it's uh, on the settlement. Uh, so of course, during the uh, work, we collected all kinds of samples for palynology, paleobotany, and for radiocarbon datings. Nika Wanishvili uh, is studying fauna, and for now, we have not information about it. Uh, and yeah, uh, Dr. Nana Rusishvili from the Georgian National Museum studied archaeological, archaeobotanical samples. 30 cultivated and wild uh, plants uh, have been identified. Among them, three species belongs to the uh, cultivated plant, as it can be seen from, uh, from the table, uh, which was found in the uh, 13 samples. Among them is softweed and also barley, and uh, rye was found. Um, uh, and uh, other plants as well. Uh, as for palynology, uh, palynological samples were analyzed by Eliso Huawadze and Maya Cicinadze. Uh, samples were collected from, uh, from pits. Uh, sorry, uh, this is uh, paleobotanical remains. Um, uh, 
vessels and uh, layers as well. Uh, as a result, we are found lots of cereal and uh, uh, trees, pollen grains such as a uh, walnut, nut, oak, uh, and flex uh, fabric fibers as well. And more importantly, as palynologists say, the climate was warmer back then, uh, as evidenced by the abundance of uh, heat tolerant trees uh, and plant remains. So, uh, uh, to summarize all, all uh, results, uh, as I mentioned, and as you have seen, many things are unclear and it's necessary to continue uh, work in this uh, uh, year we, and this uh, year, year work will continue with the funding from the Cultural Heritage Agency and will focus on extend the first terrace on the second trench where remain of architecture and pottery was observed. So it's very important to confirm the Kuralax and Bedeni layers on the settlement. Similar cases are attested in other settlements as well, but the, uh, the Irmiska is a new opportunity to study how the lifestyle and economy change and geographical environment, uh, I mean, location of the site uh, is very significant as well. It's also important to study the wall, which was uh, found in the second trench and which must have belonged to the Bedeni period. Despite the Kurarax buildings we are disturbed, it still gives us a hint how they looked like. They might be semi-subterranean uh, semi buildings. Moreover, similar buildings are known from uh, uh, Chobareti, which makes it uh, even clearer. But the Bedeni buildings is not even known from the region and I hope that the wall would not be disturbed and it will give us an idea of how the house looked like at that time period. It is especially important to confirm the evidence of uh, Bedeni culture in this part of the region as this culture was not known until now and in Georgia it is an extreme uh, western frontier of its spread. The settlement has great importance for understanding of uh, Bedeni culture and its relation to the Kuralax culture as well and in this case dates uh, are crucial. Uh, dates are crucial and thanks to Dr. Irina Hambashidze and Sven Hansen, they help us and do radiocarbon dates, uh, dating in Germany and hopefully we will have it soon and bring more uh, clarity to the uh, chronology. So uh, pretty detailed, but briefly, this uh, was results and it uh, still needs to process and analyze uh, restrictions uh, caused by the pandemic slowed down the study process. And I hope uh, to provide more information in, in the future. Uh, thank you. This is our amazing team. Thank you for your, your attention. Thank you very much, Gia for this very detailed presentation. Um, it's, it's always interesting, but also challenging to encounter such, um, you know, studied as, as they're like ongoing and we still don't have all the data. As you see like on the side, there were uh, questions about radiocarbon dates, which you obviously addressed. And you said, we, we still don't have radiocarbon dates. Yeah. And um, I think uh, it's, it's a super interesting site. For me, it's very challenging to try to understand the stratigraphy, obviously for you too, as you, um, as you excavate. I'm, I'm interested in, in trying to understand more about the relation, about the nature of these pits and their relation to possible relation to architecture, not just the one that clearly um, cut earlier architecture, um, but what what do you think they were or how they were related to any kind of architecture? Yes, uh, I missed something. Uh, so the main uh, aim of excavation was uh, kind of rescue archaeology to understand what kind of site is uh, and, and to understand the general stratigraphy. So uh, the most of pits, as I mentioned, we excavated in a disturbed area. And, uh, and all pits, uh, if you remember four pits in the, the trench, all pits, uh, we are, uh, it seems that they, we are later. So because they disturb the building. And it's, uh, it's very hard to consider the uh, relation to settlement, but uh, I think pits uh, are different. Some of pits, uh, as you see, some of pits, uh, we are, 
completely uh, filled with uh, stones and just uh, contain just a two or three shirts of pottery and uh, some of them uh, was filled only pottery. So uh, it's uh, very complicated. I, I, I cannot uh, link uh, them uh, to, to the settlement for, for uh, at this stage of the study. Yeah. Thank you. So it's also uh, relating to one of the questions here. I think it was by Catherine about the context of some of the finds. You I think Catherine asked about the figurines. Um, so it's also difficult to say something about the, the uh, social if, distribution and context of specific finds. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know which figurines. If, uh, if we talk about zoomorphic figurines, they yeah. comes from uh, interior of the buildings, interior mm -hmm. of the buildings. There was not tested a nice floor level, but uh, at the bottom of the of the wall, there uh, was uh, found lots of interesting materials. And also, I missed that uh, uh, fire installation, which was surrounded by by uh, yellowish structure, which was not clay; it was more like sandstone or something, and. Uh, uh, Probably that was a floor. So the figuring comes from the interior interiors of the structures. Are you saying, sorry, that they came from the interior of the structure near the fire installation? Uh, not, not very near, but uh, like 50 centimeters or something distance between the fire installation. I think installation. that's near enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but not in the... <laughs> not in the... Uh, in the fire installation was bones uh, and some pottery shirts. Yeah. Crural axis, of course. There is another question about the analysis you're running here. Um, do you yeah. find from, from Shivan, do you find any residues um, that might be food remnants in any of the ceramics? Uh, we have not analyzed yet lots of things because, as I mentioned, uh, everyone knows it's it's not news. Uh, there is pandemic. Uh, uh, hundreds lockdowns and uh, yeah, it's it's long process and we just started. So we have lots of plans mm -hmm. and yeah, we will publish everything, of course, and everyone will be informed. Yeah, um, I want to ask something because I see there are no questions on the chat right now, but feel free to add more questions. Uh, I mean, the material, the Bedeni material that you have there is yeah. definitely very distinct from the Kuraraxis material. It's, it's like really, I mean, just looking at it, you know, you have no doubt that it's something different. Um, I wanted to ask though about the stratigraphy, because again, if in Rabatu we have a very clear um, long gap between the Kuraraxis and Bedeni, um, obviously, you still don't have the radiocarbon dates, but based on the stratigraphy, do you see any accumulation that suggests there was a gap between the layers or anything? So, there is not any evidence of coexistence coral axis and pedeni, uh, definitely. But uh, if, uh, if there is a gap in stratigraphy, we don't know yet. As you see, we because it was a rescue archaeology and the uh, company who funded uh, this excavation, they uh, did not care about the results, right? So we, I, I try to avoid all kinds of big operations. Uh, so we have time now and then uh, we, uh, we are going to excavate, especially that part where the Bedeni was attested, I mean the uh, summit on the summit of the settlement. So uh, I have not answered uh, for your question. Yeah, okay. So yeah, now. More things to, more things to, uh, to study. Uh, Bertil asks again about the radiocarbon dates, which um, I can answer that Gia said they're in the lab, they're being mm -hmm. underworked. So hopefully, hopefully soon. Hopefully will be soon. Yeah. Um, Elena is asking, I'm just curious, do you see in the Bedeni material any possible connection with Western Georgia? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, no, because uh, uh, nothing, nothing is related to be, be, be Western Georgia. For, uh, I mean, the scale of the excavation, we, we were lucky because we had a, like 
two meters uh, trench on the summit and we got this picture architecture and concentration of pottery so and this pottery still goes uh, in the unexcavated area so uh, there is nothing for for yet but hopefully i have uh, like i think that uh, there might be some uh, western georgian stuff as well because of the location of of the site yeah um thank you Gia. um i mean i think this site really it's it's a good thing it presents us with more questions than answers at this point so i trust you will keep bringing us uh, interesting things and hopefully also some answers um i suggest maybe we can open um the discussion now uh, and, and try to make a um, slightly wider discussion um Oh, I see just one more questions from, um, question from Paul. Um, thank you for the interesting talk. I wondered if the presence of Colchian Bronze Age pottery was limited to one area or features uh, or feature at the site, or was it more widespread? So that's before we open it up. Uh, yeah, yeah, late Bronze Age. Uh, we are talking about late Bronze Age, right? So yeah. late Bronze Age is not my uh, research area, but uh, I have information about it, of course. So this region, this region, I mean Adigeni area, and in general Samtre, which is uh, the name of the region, uh, uh, is considered that uh, it's a part of Colchian culture. But it, uh, and it's based on the horde, Kolchian horde, which is found in Ude village. Uh, and uh, uh, now, and there is not any excavated late Bronze Age sites in, in this part of the region. region. And uh, it's hard to talk about, I don't know what's happening in, in uh, Shida Kartli, for example, or Kemo Kartli, if there is any Kolchian uh, ceramics. Uh, but in, in this area, as I know, it's first evidence of uh, uh, there is. We, we know that there is a Colchian pottery in that area from survey or for, from uh, some uh, other uh, founds. But uh, this is first evidence, as I know, it's first evidence that we found uh, some Tauro, I mean, Eastern uh, Georgian Late Bronze Age ceramic there in, in the region. So that's, uh, I think. Uh, someone else could answer even the Georgi Bedianashvili because he knows better this period than me. Um, Gia, in the site, it was just limited to a specific oh. area of the site? Or uh, no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, no, uh, just uh, several pits contained late Bronze Age ceramics and uh, topsoil. Yeah. And topsoil. So I think that the uh, wall, if you remember, which was on the slope uh, of eastern slope of the settlement, it might be a late Bronze Age, uh, I don't know, defensive uh, wall or something like that. And by the uh, during the Soviet uh, uh, military base, it's disturbed. This activity is disturbed. Uh, they they uh, destroyed the walls because they used for for bunkers and uh, trenches. It was a border of Turkey and Soviet Union, so this was very very uh, like military base. Yeah, thank you. Um, so um, let's open up our discussion and for any comments or questions that you have um, to Georgi and Gia or um, anything in general you would like to add. I just, I wanted to say that, I mean, we want to, we want to talk about uh, transitions, but actually it's very, very difficult um, to pinpoint um, this, this thing. Um, even in these two sites that have both um, Koraxis and Bedeni. Um, so we remain with several questions, I think, both on the nature of the transition, of what happens, uh, what, what, what is the nature of the changes in, in, not just in material culture, but the entire cultural repertoire and social um, uh, way of life. Um, and, and the little bits um, and, and things that we do see some possible continuity. Um, so I think it raises questions um, as, as to how things uh, change. We also have the questions of the pace of, the, of how 
fast things happen um, and, and how it rolls, and which again, we remain with the issues of the gaps and the chronology that is still, um, that is still fuzzy. So I'm just putting it out there and I'll be happy to hear. I, I'm stuck deep in the core Araxis. I, I still haven't got to the end of it. So whatever you guys have to say, I'm, I'm opening it up for discussion. Um, I see um, we have two more questions here. Sepida, uh, I think you, you, Sepida is asking, I think, Gia, did you have burnished decoration on the pottery as well? I suppose, Sepida, you mean the Coraraxis? Uh, uh, no, we have not in, uh, not from Coraraxis and also not from the Bedeni. And in Coraraxis, we have only incised decorations and mostly uh, basically uh, leads are decorated and no, we have not any burnished. Okay, and uh, Bertil is asking about evidence for Mark Topi in, in the area where you are uh, in India. Uh, there is not any marked copy evidence, especially that part of the region. But as I remember, uh, there, uh, sorry, Georgi, I will say some of pottery shirts from uh, Rabati settlement, uh, it looks like marked copy, but I'm not sure. But in the region of Samtra in general, there is not any marked copy uh, evidence. Thank you. So, anyone? Mitchell, you brought up some interesting points before about the transition. Sapida, you're raising your hand there. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, Mitchell, go ahead. <laughs> I will. Uh, <laughs> next one. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, at some point we get really stuck with uh, the, uh, the pottery typology. Um, the one of the things we seem to know is the Kororoxus seems very much of a society where you have very limited authority structures. Um, I don't know exactly, I mean, I like to call them vertical uh, egalitarian, but whatever you wanna call them, you really don't see tremendous leadership. You don't see all the classic signs of social differentiation that you'll see in other societies. And then you get Bedeni and you're seeing at least from the tombs, evidence of a real change in those authority structures. I mean, it's hard to see those the guys buried in those tombs and those um, as anything but people who at least symbolically are in a very different position to society than you saw at all in the Kura Rocks. And so something has changed. Um, I have to admit, I'm at a little bit of a loss to say exactly what, um, you know, whether we're talking about as Cole would like, you know, this influx of people from the North Caucasus, which is changing the dynamics. Uh, I know for Icona, I noted a long-term pattern. You seem to have this sort of pattern of settled and mobile and settled and mobile. So, you know, the Neolithic is very much of a settled, you know, agricultural um, society. Then Cocolithic seems very unsettled, much more mobile. Then Kororoxus seems again settled. And then we get Bedeni, uh, which seems again, somehow more mobile. Uh, and so it seems like that in a way is where we really need to look. You know, what is it about the nature of that change that really describes what happened? Uh, and if we can figure out that, a lot of the other details uh, certainly should hopefully fall into place as we get more data. Uh, and the fact that people would copy old pottery is like no big surprise. I mean, uh, Eleanor, who I saw there, should be familiar as you can with how the Ninevite Five is really a replay of the Ubaid. You know, people see these old things. They, they know the things, they know old stuff. Maybe they copy them for whatever reason. It doesn't necessarily, they might like them, you know, especially if you don't have the centralized production. You know, every little potter is doing their own little thing. So I think that the real, if we're going to get an answer, it's going to come from understanding the, the cultural changes, the societal changes first, and then see how all the rest fits in. Thank you, Michelle. 
I would like to say, I mean, I, I'm, I always, you know, I think we all know that uh, we like to put things in, in clear boxes and mark clear lines of transition between things, right? And, and, and really bound them clearly, but, but life doesn't work this way. Nobody said, hey guys, um, our axis is over, no more early Bronze Age. Now we start something completely new and different, right? So yeah. most probably same people are still around. They're still doing their thing, but things are changing. So we're likely to find some things that continue um, in, in spirit or in technology or in, you know, in the, in the looks of it, uh, some things that continue between the, between the um, uh, core axis and, and, and what comes later. Uh, but then the change is still kind of overwhelming when we look at the big picture. So, so I think our problem is that we, at the point at this time, is this at this point of time, uh, we we really cannot detail yet what happens in this transition. We don't have this, um, I think, uh, resolution yet, and the ability to look at it. And I think another thing that might um, kind of kind of blind us uh, when we look at all of this is the, the issue of burials and the core guns and all that, right? Because it draws the attention. So what happens in settlements? That, that I think would possibly give us better answers as to how the small changes or the, the transition the, as a process took place. Um, that, that's how I see it. Um, Catherine um, is writing, I think I'm less convinced by consistency in ceramic characteristics and more by location of settlements. I'll be interesting to see how well the Bedeni architecture, what Lundob does or does not reproduce the, orient, uh, the orientation of Quaraxis architecture. Yeah, again, this is something that I, I always wonder about. <laughs> Because um, I think we, we have to look at a, at a bigger cultural repertoire, right? It's not just the pottery, it's not just the arrowheads, it's not, it's not just one thing. It's how, it's what we have as, as a whole package and how it works together. Um, but so, yeah. you have uh, some of the examples of that from the Abbey and so this is the householding what we are doing some of it little little few years or try to hold this problem and the same problem is with Bedeni with Berkeley and just now here is the new site where we are beginning for that to compare to these two sites and we know that there are very similar material and but we don't know. Berkeley, we know clearly, much more clearly Berkeley, but with this material, you know that where it is and how much and how many material is from Berkeley. But we don't know from Georgis to Miska. It's just beginning. And Compare yeah. with that. Just it was third day was just excavated in eighties. Here is the new technologies and maybe we'll do some more, get some more information from that. Yeah. I just definitely thank you, Mindy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think definitely with our new I mean with uh, uh, more precise resolution, higher resolution of work and the questions that we have, it, it's possible to hopefully give more answers. Elena, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, to miss your continuation of the very, okay. So um, thank you, Elena. <laughs> uh, Bertil, you were um, wishing to ask something or comment? Yes, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, it seems I cannot have a video yeah. working. You, you look like uh, a, a little... So, like it's, it's all right, if you can hear me. Yes. 
Uh, yes, I, again, I will go back to uh, some of the comments that uh, Ruben has done, um, because when I look at, um, at what we have found at Mentesh uh, so it's uh, down in the river valley, already in Azerbaijan, but there we have this Kurgan with obviously material very close to Kurarax pottery, uh, but a completely different um, way of, uh, of uh, um, inhumating the people. That is a large Gorgan with a, a wagon and, uh, and a lot of material in it. So really a social a kind of elite class, a lot of beautiful uh, gold beads, etc. So, um, so this, this transition is, is more visible to, to my view and apparently to, to Rubens also during the Matkopi period than during the Bideni one. Um, and uh, I have already questions, you know, the, um, the fact that not very far from Mentesh you have uh, Baba Dervish uh, that uh, Narimanov had excavated. Well, of course, it's a long time ago. There are many questions about it, no real date. But anyway, this was a settlement and, um, and apparently it was still uh, with Kurarax kind of pottery. And, um, but still it was, um, it was later. It was so as if the Kurarax was uh, ending up together with the rise of the mod copy. In, in a smooth transition, as if you had different people you know, in the mod copy coming in, where from, we don't know. This is a, a very interesting question. How come suddenly this uh, new uh, kind of structures, um, of funerary structures uh, arrive in, uh, in this area? Where, where is it from? And, um, and they, they just, get into the Kurarax world without, apparently, without no, uh, destructions or uh, it, it seems like a smooth thing. Yeah. Thank you, Berthe. Like, it's, it's, uh, it's very interesting. I think, um, I mean, to first of all, that in some regions we do see uh, more clearly the transition or, or the end of the Kuraraxis and, and, and what happens next. Um, I think this is something we, we discuss a lot, right? How much of the changes and the processes and the end of Kuraraxis in this point, uh, in this case, would be uh, something that happens from within and how much it has to do with the interaction with other groups or cultural uh, complexes around it um, that, that bring up these um, changes. And, and I think, you know, the question, the, the answer would be somewhere in the middle, but, uh, but clearly you guys have more information. Ruben, please. I have, a, let's say, a question for everyone, yeah? So what is the last data for Georgian, Armenian, or Azerbaijan Kuraraks? Do you have real Kuraraks after 2006? Um, I don't have any. It was Chelebi, we don't have Nobody any. have. Nobody. No, I don't think nobody has. The question, I think it's not the problem of absolute date of this or other uh, complex. Let's say, let's ask, yeah? Let's ask ourselves, what's the typologically or stratigraphically last complex of Kuraraq? Is it Mars copy or not, or something else? Because I collect um, during the last years, not only Armenian, but I think so far all um, Kuraraxian data. And if we can precisely attribute, typologically attribute the material, so it's no data up to 2,600. On the territory of Armenia, we have a very specific and very local, so-called 
I give one group, which is dated between 2,600 and 500, which predate our marked copy complexes. It's just like, let's say, information for thinking, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ruben. Yeah, I think you're right. That it's not a question of, of um, just just chronology. I mean, just absolute chronology will not save us, uh, but not for lack of trying, right? I mean, Anna Paula is here, so uh, <laughs> at least uh, she's trying, right? Just one, please, just one, just a note for Ruben. Uh, uh, or Tony Sagona just visited us in 2013, and so we gave him some sample things. He did in New Zealand, in Waikato Lab, you know that, probably. And we have some of the list of these radiocarbon dates and for Markopia. There is maybe, Ruben, I will send you this. List of uh, uh, there is two, two, five, and some of them. Magrov, Inja, John, Magrov, and Kara Kurgan, and some of them. Markopi stage. Yes. Oh, oh. Yeah. Um, Georgi, and then I see Bertilis uh, again. Georgi, please. No, no. Sorry. Oh. Or Elena was also going. Was Elena was going? Uh, Elena had to leave. So. Okay. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, regarding uh, uh, late Kurak states, yeah. Like, like, like what about Sihiagora, where we have the evidences of, of, of much earlier, much later, much later date than than two thousand six hundred. Yeah. So can, can we? It's where in Sihiagora Mart opened? Where is a uh, Real Kurarak's or no, 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 yeah, we, we have real Kurarak's, real Kurarak's, which which overlaps Bedeni Bedeni uh, deposit there, and, we, and which comes and also and also uh, at Sos we have uh, quite late uh, Kurarak states as well. Like, yeah. For example, yeah. so. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it goes come almost to 2000, if, I, if I'm not right, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we're, we're it's a bit difficult to. Um, um... Yeah. Yeah, it's still yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's still uh, I think it's still unclear about about the the the, the clear edge of, of of chronological edge of Kurax, but. Uh, another, another thing that I would like to uh, uh, comment, uh, um, Michel's uh, uh, comment, uh, uh, yeah, uh, regarding uh, regarding uh, what is the reason of, of these cultural changes? Uh, of course, uh, of course, uh, uh, um, um, uh, to understand this, we need a, 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 a potter typology. As well as other things, as understanding and subsistence activities, and all, all together, probably it's important to uh, to to answer this question. Yeah, and 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 and, and uh, Potter typologies were one 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 of it, uh, I think. Yeah, but of course, I don't say that it is it is the the, the, the main main thing. Just answer and, that Mitchell will be agree with me. So, for example, in Shengavit according to radiocarbon date, you have a sequence from uh, 2,900 until 2,000. No. Yes, yes, no. me too. No. We have, um, basically we have for Kororoxes from at the latest 2,900 to 2,450 from the, the Ojak but, in N5. Yeah. But so, you have then, a date, you have a, a lot of data. Yeah. Which is, uh, well, yeah. What uh, material represents this last uh, period? Well, M5, M5, which is where we get the earliest date that we're very comfortable, is, is classic Kururoks from beginning to end, complete with the Ojak, the pottery, um, the 
Chipstone, I mean, the whole nine yards, it's, it's classic Clorox. We do then have pits that are later. So I think people in Bedenia, and we do have some Bedenia pots. So I think people were using the site afterwards. So we have like a, a pit in J5 that's dated about 2200, yeah. which is a grain pit, uh, yeah. but it's clearly not associated with Kurorox material. So I think people were, I, I think people had a sense of place, you know, that there were certain like sites which to them had a, a historical memory and they tended to go back. They tended to bury people at the sites. They tended to use them, if not the way that the Kuroroxes did. They would be there for a while. They would do some activities. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do have pretty good dates after 2600 in yeah, very clear Kuroroxes material. Yeah, thank yeah, you. I see also, yeah, I see also, a long time. <laughs> I see also Steve referred to these dates here uh, from Shengavit and from Nadir Tepeshi that runs um, to around 2500 and a little later. And, and Sapida also say that in Iran, there are um, later dates. And of course, there are the very unclear uh, situation in the Amuk uh, with the dates um, of Kuraraxis that we are not clear on that. Uh, but since we are not going to be able to solve all that right now, and our time is running out, um, I know... Um, um, Sarit? Yes? I'm Marina. Hi, Marina. Uh, can I uh, can I raise one question? It's a suggestion more. Yes, please. Uh, you uh, you heard me. So yes. uh, this discussion, great discussion about the sequence of Kuraraxis with Bedeni and which uh, time period uh, uh, locates the Martopi among them and so on, many questions, is uh, very interesting, of course, and many uh, questions arise concerning this. Why not think of my suggestion uh, to organize special um, either lecture or whatever you want, uh, let's say about exactly this period where the changeovers taking place in Kavkaz, South Caucasian region and uh, surrounding the area um, of the South uh, and dedicate a special speech, mm -hmm. a special discussion, not speech, but discussion mm -hmm. about this. Because and in my mind, Ruben Badalian is quite uh, right saying that after 2600, um, uh, we have no real Kurwar access. Uh, I, uh, my, uh, my feeling is it is true because 2,500, what we have in South Caucasus, in Georgia especially, um, in Georgia, any site, uh, it is some, something mixture, um, uh, Martrofi with uh, Kuraraxis. It's yeah. a memory of Kuraraxis and Martrofi is just post Kuraraxis. And how this, uh, um, uh, how it's ranging uh, and connecting mm. with the next stage mm. or pace, uh, Bedeni, it's a great question, but Martropi is more uh, closing and joining with the Kurwar axis. And this time period, uh, for my, uh, by my mind, it's take place in 2000, after 2600. Well, like, like, thank you, so, Marina. Uh, just yeah. a suggestion that why don't dedicate a special discussion sure. about this um, local time period, which is very interesting and arise a lot know. of questions and many uh, enough much. We have uh, sites in Armenia yeah. as well in uh, Georgia uh, to consider this. And maybe after all, will be more clear some things. Uh, this is definitely. all my mind. It's, and it's I think that Martropi is more closer, uh, not by age, mm -hmm. uh, but um, uh, culturally, it's more closer with the uh, Kuruar Axis yeah. culture, late pace, of course, yeah. uh, final Kuruar Axis, let's say. So I agree with Badalian. Yeah. 
Yeah, thank you, Marina. Uh, I think we'll definitely um, um, leave this suggestion to the wonderful yeah. uh, young people who organize this uh, network. And maybe we will continue to run this discussion or debate as uh, yes. Catherine. Uh, it's going to be a heated debate, I already know. Um, so we will leave it um, to you guys. I know, um, thank you all for joining us uh, and for sticking around for, for that long. And we definitely have a lot of questions and a lot of uh, food for thought um, to continue with. Uh, Magda, Narmin, uh, you wanted guys to say something before we finish. So the stage is yours. Thank you, like, thank you to everybody, like our speakers and our wonderful moderator. Uh, if you have any comments or any questions regarding to the uh, next, spe uh, next speech, or if you would like to present your research regarding to the Caucasus, please get in touch to us, uh, send us a mail. And also, um, yeah, Gwen, would you like to jump and I can continue after our um, the Twitter post. Um, okay, um, uh, yeah, I'll just say a few words to... Um, and I'll share the screen, yep. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I just wanted to introduce our network to those of you who have been for the first time. And then also, first of all, thank you to all the speakers, Georgia and Mia, for your fantastic talks. Um, and obviously to Lisa Reed for a fantastic and stimulating moderation. Um, so yeah, we are a group of master and PhD students are working on the Caucasus. Um, and the overall aim of the network is to promote interdisciplinary dialogue um, and bring together regional archaeological and historical debates, um, as well as discuss current research. So we're welcome to talk to members from a variety of fields, not just archaeology, so also history, art history, medieval studies or literature, um, also, also obviously surrounding the Caucasus and adjacent regions. Um, yeah, the, uh, the network is also an inclusive and encouraging environment, um, and we are playing a role in uniting, transcending national boundaries, and enhancing dialogue. Um, so we particularly want to provide a space for young scholars to pre pre uh, present their work um, and therefore um, foster exchange among scholars and early career researchers. Um, Mark, do you want to go ahead? Uh, yeah, currently the Caucasus uh, Through Time Network are hosting uh, and giving an opportunity to the young scholars who are working in the ca Caucasus. Uh, if you would like to share your research, please send us um, and we will tweet on our Twitter page. Uh, the format should be 250 characters. It might contain images, tables, etc. And yeah, we will post on our page. And yeah, if you still have some questions regarding community or regarding to our presentations, uh, upcoming presentations, or if you would like to join our community, you are welcome. Now, uh, with the last announcement, I promise. Uh, so I'd just like to uh, remind everybody who joined us today that we are accepting abstract, abstracts for our autumn seminar series, which will be running monthly between September and December 2021. We are happy to hear from individuals with single presentations, uh, but also from groups of uh, people and scholars who would like to uh, maybe assemble a panel uh, for a broader discussion. We were just talking about maybe holding a debate, which sounds like a perfect prototype for uh, something like that. So we would love to, um, host in, uh, to host it. We are an inter interdisciplinary network. So we welcome abstracts and proposals from any of the uh, following disciplines uh, that relate uh, to the study of the Caucasus and the uh, uh, neighboring regions, archeology, span anthropology, ethnography, history, art history, and historical linguistics. And again, the network is an inclusive and encouraging environment. And uh, we therefore put particular emphasis on early career researchers to, uh, to apply. Uh, do, uh, please do get in touch with us uh, directly if you would like to uh, discuss your ideas, submit your proposals. We are on a number of social media. We have a Facebook page, a Twitter account. If you're not a media person, you can reach out to us through our email, uh, tacotosfruitime at jiba.com. Thank you.